You manifest Patrick, you're a, a visually impaired alpine skier competing with British Army officer Jennifer Kehoe as, her, as your sighted guide on the World Cup circuit. In 2018, aged just 20, I think, um, you and Jen became Britain's most decorated Winter Olympians at the 2018 Pyeongchang Paralympic Games, winning one gold, two silver and one bronze medal. Um, you were then named Disability Sportswoman of the Year and you and um, Jen were included on the Queen's Birthday Honours list um, following your outstanding performance. And I think you were the youngest person in that year's birthday honours in 2018 to receive an MBA is that right? Yes yeah. Um, so you have no vision in your left eye and limited sight in your right eye yeah meaning that you have five percent overall vision um, and despite that you learnt to ski when you were five on family. Holiday. Yeah. <laughs> is pretty cool. Um, so we've got loads to learn from you in terms of your um, amazing tenacity, uh, resilience and ability to stay motivated on over long periods, I guess, because training, you know, you're kind of training for four years for the Winter Olympics and that must be like a long thing to kind of sustain and stay motivated for anyway despite any like not even thinking about any other considerations that you have like for instance your current injury um so I have to start by asking because it's kind of in the headlines in the sports news at the moment that it's looking likely that the summer olympics in Tokyo is going to be held off um for another year possibly um does that um, have a knock-on effect for the Winter Olympics? Like, how does that affect you? Does it affect you? Uh, for us, um, I think there will be a bit of a an effect, but for in terms of what we do training-wise, ours is still exactly when it's supposed to be, hopefully, <laughs> um, as long as nothing changes. So for us, it's just all about that that deadline and the training that goes with it um I definitely do feel sorry for the summer summer Paralympians and Olympians at the moment just yeah. not being able to train and and everything like that at least we've got a little bit more time yeah. um they're in to make it back up at the moment mm. yeah um, people missing qualifications so they may actually miss out on on the summer some of some games and right. stuff like that so I really feel feel for those guys have you at got the moment. friends and colleagues who are, are mid training for the summer olympics at the moment uh I do know a few a few of them who yeah. um who are annoyed by it <laughs> to, <laughs> to say the least um and but they're they're strong people and they know that actually waiting a year might be better because they can train more more for it and they've got more time yeah. so it's always looking on the positive side yeah and that's something that you seem even with just five minutes of chatting to you you seem to be very good at you seem to be very good at doing is that just natural for you to just um flip things on their head and think of the positives all the time or is it something that you've had to work at? Um, I suppose over the number of years um, I have deliberately looked for the positives um, because it's a lot easier to stay in that positive mindset and it makes things a lot easier and actually when you look back on um, my injuries that I have had it's yeah. always looking for the future instead of always concentrating on what did happen or mm. what, how long it took me to recover and stuff like that. So it's always looking, yeah. it's easier if you're really positive through that. So that and was it also October aids your recovery. 16, 17, you fell yeah. in super training and broke four bones in your yeah. hands. 
yeah, all four across across my left hand. <laughs> and was that your dominant hand or? No, no, okay. I'm right-handed, but okay. um, that's my left. Okay, and um, did that affect you? Uh, it did. I was off snow for, well, uh, seven weeks, which is actually quite short uh, for the recovery, but actually going back skiing my confidence had completely gone and so it took me a very long time to get back into the swing of things and get back skiing how I could do mm. um, and especially with my guide as well um, we always try and make sure there's no blame but you yeah. always feel a sense of that you've let the other person down as yeah. well um, yeah. so we had to we had to really re rebuild all that trust and and make sure it's it's completely back before we before we get racing again, which we didn't have much time to do that. Right. Um, and, and how did you go about what did you do to rebuild the trust? Uh well, I suppose it's the it's the little things that we build on really well. So if me and Jen are, are out somewhere, she'll deliberately make sure I know exactly where I'm going or that there's a curb or that there might be some something else in the way. It's all the little things in everyday day to day life that yeah. that builds that up and also yeah. with um the like exercises on snow, doing all of our band work together and uh, do all that sort of stuff is really helps and you and Jen you obviously have uh, a quite a strong bond with each other what was it like when you first met her what did you what did you make of her um I first met her well we we kind of met up and I didn't we didn't know each other really well mm -hmm. at all only by name um and so I think we were both slightly nervous, but excited at the same time. Yeah. And we just got on really, really well from the first moment. Um, we bonded over love of tea <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and Disney. We both loved Disney as well. Um, so it was really good. We had lots of fun um, and we still do now. And I think that's what was made us so close we're really good friends and that that comes into our work life as well yeah so it's really good so how are you coping with social distancing right now are you skyping each other like how are you are you is she still visiting you like what's what's happening with that um she she did come and visit me um a couple uh, well a couple of I think a week ago and now yeah a week ago um so that was quite nice because actually this season we haven't been skiing together mm -hmm. I've been skiing with a different guide because Jen had to go back to the army okay. to do a course for six months so we haven't seen each other since oh, must have been about during the summer <laughs> so it's just like what it's yeah. really nice to see her yeah. um but we're we're on the phone quite a bit through FaceTime and and yeah. that that helps I suppose. Yeah. It helps you to and I think for for everyone right now it's kind of maintaining those connections is helping everyone mm. sort of keep their equilibrium a bit. Um so in terms of like you you mentioned before how staying positive actually helps you heal quicker and I'm aware that there are academic studies on that how have how have you experienced that uh I've just found uh if I with quite a lot of things if you go through a rough time I know it might be hard to to think of the positive but actually with the help of my family because they're they're quite positive as well and Jen and and the rest of the team have helped that that actually has well you get the the effect that you want quicker yeah and I think your body listens to 
your positive your positivity and actually it motivates the cells to heal quicker and and stuff like that so i found that it it does really help with especially with injury or with having a strong mind mm. that can overpower so some of the negativity is is really good yeah and um i think yeah that mind body connection is going to be really important to people now staying indoors and do you do you have any kind of fitness tips that anyone could do easily inside their <laughs> inside their home even if they don't have I mean I've got some weights over there but even if you don't have any kind of specialist equipment mm. there are there are quite a few things that you can do without any equipment whatsoever mm-hmm. um there's like body weight stuff like squats um doing doing other things like just using a towel against the floor and sliding that back back and forward that sort of stuff is really really good and I do recommend doing some exercises whilst you are inside and and indoors or even going to do yoga outside (laughs) so you can get some fresh air is really really good and there's plenty of links on the internet or um stuff that you can print out to help you if you don't have needs that um and so it's it's really really good and really important Mm -hmm. to keep exercising in this time at the moment Mm -hmm. and it also helps with your um with your energy levels I find that if I don't exercise it also makes your mind go as well yeah so I think if you do keep exercising, it does help keep that mind, the mind strong and and stuff like that. So. Yeah. And in terms of focusing on sort of longer term goals, because it does look like we're going to be in this for quite some time now. Um, obviously, you're focusing further ahead all the time, thinking about like the next the next Paralympics, and that can sometimes be quite a, lo- a long way away. Like. How how do you kind of do you break that down into sort of smaller achievements for yourself? How do you you know keep going when the goal is quite far ahead in the future, sometimes years ahead? Yeah, so we we start with that uh, as a team. We we start with that that ultimate goal of yeah. the Paralympics, and then it depends on how far away you are from it. But say you're for four years out you've then got to break that down to each year's goal okay so we actually go back to the basics um every single summer so you get the basics right and then build from there okay so we have very processed goals no no times no um well hard we do have a medal target each year but um if we pro if we focus on the process then that those outcomes will come and it's a lot easier to to do that for the um for the processes so that will be making sure the the ski techniques right or making sure the fitness is there or making sure that you're you're motivated or that the bond between guide and athlete is strong that could be anything like that so that always helps because you can tick one of those off and then move on yeah (laughs) Um, which makes you feel like you've done something and you're going in the right direction yeah I can see that I'm a I'm a big fan of to-do lists and Mm. (laughs) every time I get to cross something off on my to-do list I always feel like oh yeah a little endorphin hit from that I've achieved something now Oh, look at your team. Sorry, my mum. <laughs> my mum just brought a cup of tea in for me. Hello. <laughs> um, so you're you're isolating your family. Yes, yeah, my uh, quite a lot of my family um are at home now. Uh, my mum's a nurse in a in a GP surgery, so she's still going out to work. <laughs> um so but they've done uh, everyone's 
<laughs> yeah, they're doing quite a lot of telephone calls and stuff like that to try and keep people away. So busy times. Yeah, it's I I've yeah, I got a letter from my GP about I need to go in for a sur- surgical smear. Um and I just sort of thought I'm that's not gonna that's not gonna happen now, is it? Um so you're you're also injured at the moment, aren't you? Mm. What 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 happened? Uh, so we were at our GB national champs and um, I when we crossed the finish line we had a really really good run um, went across the finish line just caught an edge oh. ski popped off and then it was actually the ski that hit my tibia yeah. and fractured it so <laughs> goodness yeah. yeah so it was you'd finish the run great so yeah, we <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we we actually won the race, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, that's yeah. the important thing. <laughs> yeah, at least it was a, at least we. Well, I suppose we it was positive beforehand, and then then it happened. So I'm not feeling quite so so bad at the moment, which is good. Um, and are you doing any specialist exercises for your tibia? Um, at the moment, because it's so early on, we're yeah. trying to rest it and make sure it's recovering properly. Um, and then we'll we'll start doing exercises on it. Um, I'm using like a, a complex like tens machine to make sure my muscles aren't gonna deteriorate whilst I'm mm. lying with my leg up. Yeah, um, but also. That is one my, of the, isn't it? The muscle kind of can go quite quickly. Mm. Yes, yeah. Um, but also, I've got three quarters of my body left that I can train. Yeah. <laughs> um, so doing like single leg squats and stuff like that. I've been been doing upper body press ups and stuff like that, which is uh, yeah. which has kept me going, I suppose. Yeah. Great. Is there? Yeah. Is there, if, if, if you were to say to anyone watching, listening to this, do one exercise while you're at home, what would that be? Um, oh, that's a tricky one. <laughs> um, I'd probably say squats are probably body weight squats, maybe with touches down to the floor that would be that's a very good one because it it gets it gets all your body and improves your legs your leg muscles so and you need need those um for everyday life so yeah yeah it's wrong and if if you can't if you haven't got weights what could you use instead um i suppose just having like a water bottle full of water um trying to think now (laughs) um but even even if it's just body weight um yeah anything that's (laughs) slightly heavier (laughs) um like yeah it's it'll be good to as long as there's nothing breakable if you drop it (laughs) that would be (laughs) no more yeah okay and another is there any other advice that you would give for anyone who's feeling obviously you've got you know your family around you is have you got any advice for anyone who is just on their own right now like um just you know in a flat in a house with no no flatmates no family around for sort of staying mentally well uh, i would say just make sure that you are talking to people on FaceTime and and on the phones, especially um, if you are on your own. But also, if you do have the time, do something that will really benefit you after. Yeah. So either looking at courses or I'm actually trying to improve my German because it's not very good um, using Duolingo um, or something like that. Just don't, for me... I find like 
just don't sit around and watch TV all the time, and because that's not very, very good for your for your mind or your body. Um, just get keep moving, keep chatting to people on the phone. There's lots of people in the same situation, mm. and yeah. yeah, just don't feel like you're alone or that you're burdening people because they're really not. They're probably wanting you to phone <laughs> as well. So yeah just make yeah. sure you look after you I think that's so important you can get in a mindset where you think oh no one wants to hear from me but that's so true like people need connection and it, it is a two-way two-way street right now yeah definitely cool okay is there anything else that you would like to add on the the subject of motivation and how to keep going in these trying times um I would say get as much fresh air as you possibly can because yes. it does it can get a bit claustrophobic in your <laughs> in your house <laughs> at we times our families but we also <laughs> are not yeah. with them 24 7 yes <laughs> um so go and sit outside in the garden with a cup of tea or and listen to some music or audio books or however you like to relax and just yeah live in the moment I suppose yeah cheers, cheers to that cheers to the tea <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah um thank you so much um I think that. That concludes our chat. Um, it's been it's been really wonderful talking to you. Thank you so much for your time. Um, yeah, thank you as well. And um, I'll let you I'll let you know when this goes somewhere. And um, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, stay safe. Um, and I hope thank you, you. Quickly. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.